Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Happy almost new year. And for everybody who's saying almost new decade or see you next, de next decade or any of those kinds of jokes, I just want you to do some basic arithmetic with me. Let's start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The decade's not over until the end of 2020. Math, friends, key trait in life, which you should have when you're considering picking up a display, because if you use our link in the video description, display.com forward slash UFD tech official, you can enter the coupon code UFD and save 15% off of dope metal prints that mount on your wall with magnets. We have to move our office in like a couple weeks. So I'm bringing these with me and I just take them off with magnets and I mount them in the new place with magnets, peel the things off the wall, no damage done. Nobody could tell I even had them. And for every display that you buy, display plants some trees so you can get the environment it good you get dope metal prints that look good and then you also just you're a lovely person if you use our link below so do that uh, but let's go ahead and jump on into the hot news which is a lot of intel news today because there have been leaked slides of their plan to defeat amd ryzen 3000 is finally going down thanks to comet lake and what we can see is that this is almost the exact same thing we got 18 months ago from intel with two more cores. Their highest spec chip is gonna be the 10D900K coming in at 10 cores and 20 threads. A base clock frequency of 3.7 gigahertz, a boost clock frequency of 5.2 gigahertz, and then a all core boost of 4.8 with a new technology that Intel is dubbing thermal velocity boost, which is gonna be amazing for everybody who wants to sound awesome while talking about their less than stellar Intel chip that they got instead of picking up an AMD CPU. But if we take, but if we take a look at thermal velocity boost, it basically means if there is thermal headroom allowed on the chip, it will boost up to 5.3 gigahertz instead of 5.2. This is something that AMD has been doing. Intel has come up with a great marketing name for it, which personally I prefer. Hyperthreading, so much better than simultaneous multi-threading. Thermal velocity boost, so much better than XFR, extended frequency range, whatever the heck that means. And Intel inside, it's much better than being dead inside. Come on, my friends. So those are the generic specs that we're getting from the 10 series on mainstream desktop. It does look like Intel is preparing for a launch at CES in just about a week or so, at least according to all of the leaks that have been coming out. However, as I mentioned with thermal velocity boost, what you'll see is that the 10D900K chip is running at 125 watts. So is the 10D700K, which is gonna be eight cores and 16 threads. That's also 125 watts. All of their unlocked chips are super hot, but at least they're being honest about it this time, as opposed to saying that their TDP is 95 watts and really it's just a prize fighting inferno. But I think one of the most important things from Intel's lineup is a comment that I read, which basically said, imagine picking up something like the i9-10900, spending 400, 500 plus dollars on a chip, and it's still being locked. AMD has unlocked chips basically through the entire gamut. You can pick up the Athlon 3000G, which I have right over here. $50 processor, APU, unlocked from the box. $50, AMD does it, Intel. Time to get with the times. And also with the 10D series, what we're finding is that there's hardly anything new. You're not getting PCI Express 4.0, which means that AMD is super ahead of the curve. Um, you're basically getting enhanced core memory overclocking, Wi-Fi 6, increased performance, whatever the heck that means, Intel rapid store technology, new stuff, and then all of this crap right here showing us the new features that Intel is going to be rolling out. None of them have to do with new technology. PCI Express 4.0 has been out for quite some time. AMD has it. Intel has no answer to it. It's kind of sad when the best technology, the latest technology, is only exclusively available on AMD. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. 10 cores, 16 threads, no release price yet, probably in the $500 region, which puts it right up against the 3900X, which is 12 cores, 24 threads. And they couldn't even be bothered to upgrade the iGPU, which is going to be UHD 630. So everything about this Intel launch looks like it's going to be a massive disappointment, something that uh, really won't help any consumers. 
And it looks like it's going to be even more confusing because it appears that there's some indication that it's going to come in on two new sockets. Yes, my friends, two different sets of motherboards. You know how you could previously use any motherboard from a given generation, let's say an H310, and you can still put a 9900K on there? Well, that's probably not going to happen given that we already know about the LGA 1200 socket, which appears to be reserved for the higher end chips, such as the 10900K with 10 cores and 20 threads. It looks like the lower end chips, which is going to be in the i5 to i3 region, will be on what's known as LJ1159. Yes, my friends, even the chips that don't require the extra power delivery still will require you to move on to a new socket instead of Intel recycling the Z390 uh, chipset variety of families. H310, gone. What? You need H410 now, my friends. Don't be pathetic. Living in 2017, even though Intel hasn't updated their technology since 2015, you need to just enjoy what they give you and shut up because there's no other alternative, is there? You, you literally can't get anything else, anything better. No, you can't. So you suck with it. Intel. Enjoy them for the rest of your lives. And then some more technology that Intel is apparently going to be unveiling at CES is a new way of cooling their Project Athena Ultrabooks, which is uh, actually kind of cool, pun intended, I think but also really not cool because they're gonna be having a vapor chamber connected to the chip and that's gonna run up to the display which is going to have a graphite sheet behind it so it's gonna dissipate heat behind the display which obviously would give it more uh, surface area than it typically would in a normal laptop cooling scenario but they have to run it through the hinge of the laptop which I just, I have to assume will break at some point. It's, hinges break. That's that's something that happens in laptops. Oh, you broke the screen on your laptop? Guess what? You also broke the entire cooling system. Repairability on that is going to be ridiculous. Lee sucky. But that's enough Intel news for today. Let's move on over to some AMD stuff, which is apparently ASRock has leaked the specs of the upcoming RX 5600 XT, which supposedly would get announced at CES. So what we find is that it actually has the same amount of stream processors as the 5700 which is quite good, but its core clock is limited, but more importantly, its memory clock is limited. Its memory bandwidth coming in at 288 gigabytes per second, whereas the 5700 is 448, a quite stark difference between the two. So even though it might have the same amount of GPU raw horsepower, its uh, memory horsepower is going to be limited on its six gigabytes of GDDR6. So there's going to be differentiation between the two. The only way I see this working is if it comes in at the $250 price point, but the price hasn't been announced yet. And considering that something like the 5500 XT 8 gig version is costing in the $220 region, it would cannibalize the 5500 XT. Putting this at $300 would cannibalize, like they couldn't do that. So they have to do $250, but I don't, why wouldn't you just get the 5600? Why release the 5500 XT? I'm so confused. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Now let's talk about some electric vehicles because there's some discussion coming out around those. Kia's Imagine electric vehicle is actually coming out of concept phase and moving into production phase. The car company saying that they're actually going to have it in production in 2021. And it looks like Turkey is going to be producing their first car ever from Turkey, and it's going to be an all-electric crossover SUV from TOGG or TOG, as I like to say. Uh, it looks like it's going to have pretty decent specs, no price mentioned at this time, but uh, it's going to be able to do 0 to 60 in around 7.5 seconds in 186 mile range at the base model, and then the higher end model is going to do 0 to 16 in around 4.8 seconds with a 300 mile range, which is respectable for a first all-Turkey car company producing its all electric vehicle looking at other car companies who have made electric cars such as Nissan and Mazda their efforts have been um, less than stellar let's talk about China and their alternative to GPS yes my friends apparently it's going to be fully operational at the end of 2020 their Beidou navigational satellites system which 
I probably pronounced that incorrectly, has been functioning in some capacity for quite some time and around 70% of Chinese smartphones actually have access to this network already, but they expect it to be fully operational by the end of 2020. The reason China is developing its own navigation system using satellites is that they don't want to be dependent on the US with a GPS because they fear that during a military conflict, the U.S. could turn off GPS, even though that actually hasn't happened. Since GPS has been developed, the U.S. has never turned it off for military purposes. It's still possible. And speaking of more China news, there's some information coming out about the scientists who actually use CRISPR technology to edit the genes of babies before they were born, and then they came to full term. The reason he did this was to give them HIV resistance, which ended up actually working according to the stories that I read, but this is illegal in like all of the world and so China has now sentenced him to three years in prison. A couple of the co-workers who worked with him on the paper also received sentences two years and 18 months respectively plus fines and bans from being in the scientific research community. Um, you, we could discuss all of the ethics of this down below but suffice it to say it's legal and they got prosecuted for it. So conspiracy theories down below in the comments, just keep it civil, my friends. And then Sony apparently is conspiring to put new buttons on the back of their controllers according to a new patent filing by Sony showing that they are indeed just gonna put little triggers on the back of their PlayStation controller. This might make its way into DualShock 5 or this could just be Sony uh, getting patents while they can and making it so that they uh, have that to sue companies if they need to. Speaking of litigious companies, Apple. Let's talk about them because there's a new rumor floating out there that they're going to be launching a high-end gaming focused Mac in 2020 for the up and coming burgeoning esports market. Apparently the reasonable price that's being quoted for this esports machine is $5,000, which super reasonable, at least according to this WCCF tech title. Sure, yeah, $5,000 for a gaming machine. I, Mac OS has to make tons of strides in order to be viable as a gaming computer. Uh, I, I don't have much more to say about this. You guys probably have a ton of comments on this down below. And then there's some information coming out about the Pixel 4a. There's a leaked design showing up that it looks like it potentially will have a punch hole cutout for its front facing selfie camera. It will have the same square design of the rear cameras as the Pixel 4 and retain the fingerprint reader on the back and likely still have uh, the all plastic design that came with the Pixel 3. So in case you're interested in that, it looks like Google's not giving up on the mid-tier smartphone market. And you know who's not giving up on The Witcher? Gamers, my friends, yesterday we released a video about some mods that will allow you to play The Witcher in a way that's more lore friendly, that actually requires you to uh, prepare for the battle, so you can check out that video right up there. But that also is coinciding with the fact that uh, the author of The Witcher is now the number one bestseller author on Amazon right now, and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is now the best-selling game on Steam and GOG, and has more concurrent players than it ever had at launch, topping out at around 95 5,000 concurrent users on the game as of uh, recording this episode. It could potentially go up, could potentially go down, but The Witcher is seeing tons of success since the Netflix series came out, which I actually thoroughly enjoyed. Obviously, there's things that they can improve on for season two, but the Netflix uh, series of The Witcher satisfied the need for me to see that series. So I thought Henry Cavill was great. All of my uh, skepticism about the series was gone when I watched it. So that's great. But my skepticism of Amazon remains because there's a new report coming out saying that in order to make all of the holiday deliveries that has come out, which Amazon is saying is to the tune of 3.5 billion packages, they chose to not have on-road practical training because it was a bottleneck. Oh, you know that thing that people do for their jobs, which is actually a highly dangerous activity, driving around multi-ton vehicles that are basically flaming missiles of explosion and death and just can mow down entire crowds of people. Yeah, we didn't teach people how to be safe while doing that, even though that's what they should do because it was too slow. This isn't the first time that Amazon has had this allegation come against them with their delivery company, but the last time it did, when ProPublica and BuzzFeed released the report, said that this is just another attempt by ProPublica and BuzzFeed to push a preconceived narrative that is simply untrue. Whether or not they're going to uh, refute this one, they probably will, but uh, just you know, stay a little further back from Amazon delivery drivers, especially during the holiday season, because who knows? Who knows whether or not they have even have a driver's license? They probably do. Probably, that's probably like 
that's too far. And then there was also a rumor that came out a little while ago, I probably should have put this next to the Apple eSports section. Anyways, there was a rumor that came out a little while ago that Safari would be transitioning to Chromium, which is something that Microsoft's Edge web browser has recently done. However, uh, after a little bit of people just digging into the legitimacy of this, finds that that's not happening. This The leak is completely not verifiable. It uses bug reports and screenshots, and one of the bug reports is from 2015. The other one is recently, but that's for the bug report that has nothing to do with it coming to Chromium, and then people who are associated with Apple are just like, what the heck are you guys talking about? This is, no, what? And I'm gonna know what on this, out on this episode of Hot News. Everybody who watched it, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Check out Displates, where you can buy dope metal prints. Displate.com forward slash UFT tech, tech official. Wow, I'm done. See you tomorrow. Bye, friends. Ah, crap, I'm an idiot.